in to the online broadcast network. After Buzz TV, over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after-show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Hey guys, and welcome to. What? What? Attack on Kittens, apparently. No, it's Attack on Minecraft. Oh, oh I just saw a Those kitten. Those of you who are listening on, on audio, you may want to switch to video for this one because someone made the Attack on Titan opening in Minecraft, and it's beautiful. Also, hashtag Angry German. <laughs> also, it's the right song. That's what I appreciate. I it's the right They chose also. the correct version. <laughs> the correct version. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Steven finds these different versions of the opening every single time because last time I think we had the Vocaloid opening. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Hashtag techno -jerk. Yeah, I kind of just like glanced up and like the symbol for Mar Wall Mario looked like it was a symbol of a cat. Or this is hashtag angry Minecraft. So hashtag I like that they're flying Minecraft. around with no strings. That's all good. We're just <laughs> I think we're all just well, fascinated by this Yeah, video. it's like we Look can't even the start the show. Is this? Oh, geez. All right. So <laughs> that is Attack on Minecraft. Meanwhile, back at the plot. <laughs> <laughs> but we're here for Attack on Minecraft, actually. So joining us this week is, oh, I guess it is a person in the picture. Anyways, person in the picture. John Quick. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? How you doing? The lovely Katie Cullen. Hi, all my buddies. Megan Salidas. Hey guys. And I'm Dave Klein. Yeah. <laughs> I like me saying my name is what spurred it. Yeah, again. Well, let's, let's, just, let's just let it run out. Let's just let it. There we go. All right, we're good. We're good. That there was we go. All kinds of beautiful. <laughs> that was hilarious. All right. Next time, attack on and on. <laughs> so. Female Titan is trapped. That is how we start off, is right as the female Titan has already been strung up a bunch. And Irv is like, you know what? I don't think this is enough. Let's we do it again. Should, let's we shoot her some more. <laughs> we should play it safe, guys. <laughs> and shoot all of the things. I, Probably a good choice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, I can't really argue with him on that one. It, it was definitely the right thing to do. Well, do try, though. <laughs> try to argue with him. Assert no. yourself more. No, I... He, I he seems like the kind of guy who really knows what he's doing. Sir, I think this may be too many harpoons. <laughs> no, there's never, <laughs> never, yeah. there's never, never such thing as too many harpoons in this scenario. I will tell you when it's too many harpoons. <laughs> we want them all in the eyeballs of every eyeball. Yeah, there was one in her eyeball that was just. Ooh. How creepy was that? <laughs> She's not the female titan. She is the pincushion titan. Yeah, I uh, I hate anything around her in your eyes. It just wears me out. It's my one thing, and I'm just like. Yeah. Uh, so you're not an ice cream. You got a healthy guy. dose of ice cream there. Mm, nope. <laughs> But I'm too. Frozen anyway. yogurt. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. No, it's, it's so, a trope. It's I, ice cream. I you know. know. I know, but Our I was using might it. not. <laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> turns out the Titans are climbing up trees. And as uh, Armin points out, which is probably an important point, it looks like the Titans can learn, although at different rates. That is kind of terrifying because they can problem solve and use some degree of critical thinking, which is kind of, again, it's just a little bit unsettling. Yeah. I guess you look at it like if. Um, I don't know, it's like a dog's chasing after an animal and then runs up a tree and the dog's just like trying to get up the tree somehow. You could look at it the same way. It's like the Titan's okay. like, I gotta somehow get up there. First, then we watch one just completely fall, which yeah. is pretty great. But he, he was doing a pretty good job. Like, the what? other ones were, like, trying to, like, just grab at the bark, but then this guy was like, wait, wait, wait. Look, if like, I stand between two of them, I can, like, up. shimmy. Although, actually, the guy was just, one's just holding onto the bark. That would actually be the better way to do it. That's how you're supposed to climb up things. I learned in parkour how to climb up light pole. Oh, really? So, yeah. You actually hold on to it that way and lean back so you're, you counterbalance your weight and climb up. I want to learn parkour more about Titan. 
Parkour on Titan for I you guys. I want to learn more about your parkour expertise. That sounds awesome. Well, I use but three. I do to attack <laughs> on Titan because that's what's I do to use talk ODM gear <laughs> and I fly around using that while doing parkour. That's amazing. Well, ODM gear is like parkour on easy mode. Yeah, you but got all it the helps. Sheets locked in, you just go. When I'm falling towards the ground, I'm like, I could roll and make it so I don't hit all my weight, or I could just use my ODM gear. Or I could break way. my spine by using these harpoons attached to my hips. I choose that. <laughs> so, other thing we get is Jean being the one to actually explain what's going on and pointing it out to Armin and just saying, like, hey, I think uh, it's got to be a spy. And actually, Jean figured it out. So, yeah. actually, we're, we're, we're switching around. A lot of people are having this realization. Yeah. Like, uh, the, of course, Team Levi's having this realization. And Jean, of course, New Jean is awesome. New Jean thinks things through. This is. This is a good thing. <laughs> well, this I think he thought things before. He thought things through before, like how do I best live in this world on Easy Street? Yeah, yeah. No, <laughs> he now thought that, that through. Now that he's, you know, lived through obviously the the trust incident. Uh, now that he's lived through that and has actually, you know, been somebody to experience loss, at least in a way that he hadn't experienced it before, presumably. Marco. Oh. Mm. It's Polo. something. It's just kind you of hush. It's it's just more of his character development, and we really see him. Yeah, now he's now he's in it to win it. He's invested now. He threw out his cheat codes, and he's actually playing the game. Yeah. Uh, we have Krista pretty freaked out about everything, so we actually get a little Krista moment, so that was nice just to see her again. But uh, back to Aruo, Eld, and Petra, they're all ang uh, kind of angry at um, Aaron. Aaron for pointing out that, like, hey, you realize uh, Irvin didn't fill you in on this? What does that <laughs> say about his trust for you guys? And they're like, whoa, 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 are you saying that we weren't filled in on this scenario because they think we're a liability? Yeah. So yes. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Which, that's not necessarily true. I mean, it, it's just sort of something that happens in the military. You you don't give everyone all the information because, again, especially when there's a spy on the loose and you have no idea who it is and everything yeah. like that. The more you, the more people you keep in the dark, the more likely that secret is going to be kept. As but they call we, it the fog of war. Yes. Exactly. For the need-to-know basis. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I think yeah. need-to-know basis. But we do have on the phone with us Austin Tyndall, who plays, speaking of Marco... Marco on the phone! How are you doing? Good, how are you doing? Good, good to, to have you yeah. here. Thank you so much for calling in. Yeah, yeah, it's a pleasure. So, um, how, how did you actually end up on Attack on Titan? How did that work out for you? <clears throat> um, I, uh, I was asked to audition by the director, Mike McFarland, and um, um, originally, I, I, uh, I don't think I even auditioned for Marco. I auditioned for... Um, uh, a few of the main characters, yeah, um, uh, including Armin and Aaron, and um, uh, then they called me uh, like a month later, and were like, "Hey, we need you for a few hours." <clears throat> and uh, it's interesting because Marco is such a—he's uh, a, he's a talked-about character a lot, but he, um, in terms of recording him, it didn't actually take very long. Yeah, I mean, he's only in kind of the first few episodes for the most part, but he ends up being pivotal to a lot of the characters' points of view in the show, so he's definitely an important character. Yeah, I was, I was, uh, I'm still continued to be surprised by his popularity. Yeah. Well, I think it's his earnest, the, just the earnestness of the character is kind of like he, he wants to be an honest-to-God chivalrous knight, and that, that comes through a lot. Uh-huh, and, um... <clears throat> Yeah, it's, it's interesting, too, because he's very convicted, but it is for different reasons than a lot of the other people, and it's such a juxtaposition in all of that kind of uh, gore and, um, you know, fatalistic stuff going on that he's still, like, bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and positive and still kind of fighting the fight. Yeah. So what sort of mentality did you go into, then, when you were actually trying to figure out how to voice his character? How did you decide how you were going to play him? Um... Well, uh, you know, uh, uh, Mike, too, gave me a lot of um, guidance with that because uh, he, he kept uh, having me <clears throat> pitch the character up as much as I could, kind of. Uh, that would be my most regular note. I'd be like, okay, that was some good reading, but give it to me higher. Yeah. Uh, as he's a young boy. Um, he's a young man. Yeah, he's young, but he's also, uh, 
uh, you know, he's, he's very innocent, and um, that tends to live in, in your head voice uh, when you're when you're voicing a character like that, uh, as, a, as opposed to some of the other characters I play where you're just trying to have all of the vibration happening in your chest. Yeah. A lot of, it's interesting how technical it ends up becoming, but a lot of uh, what I do when preparing and <clears throat> performing is is all about kind of where I'm making my voice vibrate in my body and uh, and how nasally I'm allowing myself <laughs> to be and um, and where you know where the where the sound bounces out of your mouth I think it's amazing to me though that you can you can do that range because that's something I've always had trouble with. I took a dialect class when I was in college, and that was the biggest problem I had was moving my voice around. So I have a lot of respect for you that you can just do that and be like, okay, I'll just move my voice up a little bit more. Or oh yeah, and it's not it doesn't it definitely didn't come super it didn't come natural to me. Um, <clears throat> and even with dialects now, it's I can I can kind of only have one in my head at any time, and then it's like if I get cast in something else, then um. I'll have to go study that dialect for a week. Yeah. Do you just listen uh, to like a dialect on tape and do it in the car? How how does that process yeah, for you? Yeah, yeah, there's there's a few good um resources. Yeah. Uh, and I find the most useful thing is, is uh there's some places online where they'll they'll actually take people from the region and have them just read large pieces of text that have most of the syllable sounds that you need. Um <clears throat> as opposed to some of the instructors out there who are might have a CD where they give you, you know, ten different dialects. Right. Uh, and and then and, and this is just uh, available on YouTube. You can I can just go like Scottish Broge and just like look that up and listen to a man just like read um, like yeah, cake recipes. Yeah. There's um oh what's that? There's a website that um, a college run and they kind of um, find people from different places and get volunteers online to record things. But there's also a ton of stuff on YouTube. That's another thing. Yeah, well, well, it's all like the secrets. Like, this is how you do it. This is how to train. Yeah. Yeah. Sitting here taking notes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Want to become a best uh, yeah, voice actor? I mean, start I, training. I, I YouTube. Huh? Sorry? Oh, I was just saying, like, this is the way to do it if you want to get better at voice acting. This is a great uh, tidbit, I think. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, I, I watch YouTube videos for everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I think John was mentioning to me that uh, you used to do stage acting. Is that correct? I, I remember hearing in an interview you said you had met um, Ian Sinclair at was the Austin Shakespeare Fest. You were in Macbeth. Is, is that uh, correct? We were in, uh, we were in, we were in the Dallas Shakespeare. Oh, Dallas. Okay. Um, and it was uh, Titus Andronicus. Even an even better play. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> we were close. Uh, <laughs> close. But yeah, I do. I do a lot of stage work. I've been trying to. Um, I've been trying to walk away from it because it's it's very uh, fulfilling and very fun, but it's not uh, kind of especially around here. It's not really if you're trying to like make a living. It's not, right, it's not lucrative. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, yeah, so, so how um, how are you enjoying then the transition to voice acting? Because it's it's so different in the sense of like on stage you have that live, as you said, it's really fulfilling because you get that immediate feedback from people being like. You know, applauding, enjoying the show, and, and that. Whereas this, you're in a studio by yourself, with maybe yeah, a director. Exactly. And that's it. It's totally different. I would say that um, it's it's very fun. It's still very fun, especially uh, if, if it's a show that you like. Um, <clears throat> but uh, 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 I think that I would not have been able to accomplish the things that I have accomplished with voice acting had I not been a stage actor because that was kind of where I uh, found myself and learned my instincts and and found where certain because because when you're on stage you can you can evoke real emotions you know it's all about kind of memorizing your lines without paying too much attention about what they're supposed to mean but just having them in your body and then allowing the moment to affect you and so you're having these like real moments and real emotional reactions, and it's great uh, for tr like if you're paying attention, it's great for just training yourself to how your body makes those sounds and when they would realistically make those sounds. Because when you're in the booth, it's just none of it is real. You yeah. can't have like a real, genuine reaction to something. You just got to remember what that was like and recreate it with your voice. And I re I remember early on, um, there were some shows that I voiced where I was supposed to be very emotional 
And so I actually, like, in the booth, kind of tried to do some sense memory and, like, get all emotional like I would for the stage. And I was. I was, like, in a very emotional place. I was in a, like, pained, like, on the verge of tears place. But it didn't come through in my voice, and it didn't yeah. help the performance. Um, so it is, it is, it's 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 interesting. It's a, I'm really glad that I'm getting the opportunity to learn the skill more. But it's definitely a totally different beast. Yeah, that's interesting because I would have thought that you you would want to get to that place for voice acting because I know I've heard voice actors complain that people don't realize sometimes they forget that it is acting still. So I I, I always imagine that you did want to reach that far. Yeah, I mean, I, well, so I mean, on some level, but at least for me, it's kind of more, um, you know, like when I did stuff like Guilty Crown, uh, I was I was pushing myself in that place, but I was also I had to pay a lot more attention to to where my voice was at and making sure that I wasn't getting so strained that I was like um, dampening the sound or cutting off something that needed to be said. Or uh, uh, whereas on stage, there's kind of a lot more freedom in organic, kind of just letting your voice go where it needs to go. You don't have to like scream in a very particular way for an exact amount of seconds. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially when you're ADRing, it's everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's so many times we're like, "Oh, that read was great," but we need it like 0.5 seconds shorter. Uh, <laughs> I, I imagine that being really frustrating after a while. It's like, oh. yeah, but, you start to find cheats like, um, like just the certain words in the sentence that you know you can like say sloppily or more quickly, like probably instead of probably. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Who you are and the character. Take out that one syllable and it helps. <laughs> so uh, we do have to move on with the show, but before we go, is there any projects that you're working on or that are about to come out that you can actually talk about? Uh, there's a ton that I can't talk about just quite yet. It's yeah. a, it was a great year. There's going to be some really funny stuff. But Bento, still, I think they haven't released the new date yet. That was the last one, I think, that I am allowed to announce. All right. Um, and there's two episodes online for it right now. It's going to be a great show. I don't know. They um, pushed back the release date, and they haven't announced a new one. But hopefully it's coming soon. Great. And I can't wait to hear about all the announcements. Glad you had a good year. Awesome. Thanks. All right. Thank Thanks. you so much. Yeah, Bye. it was great talking to you. Yeah, great talking <laughs> to you, too. Thank you so much. All right, so again, that was Austin Tyndall who voiced Marco, and we were just literally talking about him. Really, so, man, speak of the devil, here you are. It's Marco. almost like we planned it. <laughs> My God. Oh, really? <laughs> Funny that. But no, seriously, guys, Marco, I'm so sad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and I, I literally just got a question him. on the chat from a little bit too late. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. sorry. Like, literally, like as I was wrapping up, I looked down like, oh, next time. <laughs> So, anyways, let's go ahead and move on to uh, the Titan, uh, the trees, and the Titans, and um, we just talked about that. So, Han, she's really excited about everything. Oh, so great! I I love when Hanji just you know totally fans out about about Titans, but science. But it's kind of, it, in this one in this particular case it was kind of sadistic because with every harpoon that hits the female Titan, the wounds heal, but the harpoon's still there. So yeah. you know their joints are tightening up and the muscles are too and everything like that, making her immobile. Yeah, and Hanji's just like, yes, and explaining that, and uh, like, he's so excited. Also, Given like, how many scouts the female Titan just murdered, I'll give Hanji that one. <laughs> I will give her, I will give them that. You know what, if they just have a lightning strike, just like go right behind her as soon as she's done, finish saying something, like I'll forgive anything. I'll, I'll even just like let that go. It's like, that doesn't make sense in the scene. Doesn't matter. Hanji just finished saying something, lightning strike. Where, where did the clouds come from? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else is just like, it happens. Just just, just let it go. Don't stand behind her when she's talking just about something. Just back science. away. Back just away. Let it go. Don't it's hold your swords of, up in the air. Just, you know. <laughs> just, it's kind yeah, of exactly. like when, when there's a new person and everybody just kind of gets up and leaves the table. They just, yeah. Yeah, it's something that happens. <laughs> so Tiger Version X had pointed out that this is about the episode where I went, oh man, Attack on Titan is really brutal before we, this everything was just a warm up. 
This so, is the episode. Right? I, yeah, I don't know. There's been some. There've been this some episodes. One? Well, I, well, I mean, go ahead. All right. Well, this episode, like, it's titled Irwin Smith, and so much of the episode is about getting. It, like, we see so very little of this character all the time. This entire episode is almost devoted to his own character development because yeah. you just have characters talking about him and talking about his mindset, and it's, then it's almost like Man of Steel, where Superman had no character; people had to describe it for you. <laughs> only it uh, worked, only yeah, it worked, Attack Dave. Titan has been <laughs> <laughs> I know, a much better version. So, uh, yeah, Alda Alda also, I'll, I'll agree with Irvin here, but we, we get this, uh, this great line about leaders and who Irvin is that I, I like a lot, which is that they have to accept the burden to do the unspeakable. And they're showing all these various leaders that we've seen throughout the show so far, and then including Irvin, that just about all the sacrifices that he had to do to get to this point, and was it worth it, was it not? And Armin, being the tactical one, is like, yeah, like, no one can look back, and like, no, or no one can look into the future. You can always look back in hindsight 2020 and be like, oh, yeah, that was not the best choice. But for what he knew at the time, this was the best choice to do, despite all the sacrifices he had to make. And again, it's that whole chess thing that we get before, with that chess analogy where, as much as it sucks, to win chess, sometimes you have to lose your pawns. Sometimes you have to lose a knight. But it's all about that angle, not losing everything. So just a great analogy about Arvin. That great quote that Armin said, it yes. says, to rise above monsters, we sometimes have to abandon our own humanity. Because if it's worth holding on to, it's also worth letting go. Yeah, if you yeah. can't let go, it's not worth, worth holding it. on to. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know about you guys, but I got goosebumps. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so that, that's, also Ar that's also Armin, like, growing into a much more scarier human being. Which, <laughs> that, it, it makes me wonder if this series were to ever get, like, a time skip, where would we see Armin in the future? Like, would he be somebody like a, a you know, Commander Irvin, who is the calculating one who's abandoned his humanity for for certain things i love that you assume that he's alive i would like, <laughs> like to believe so, so <laughs> we have a time skip do we know if anyone's gonna if there was a time skip and he happened to survive <laughs> yeah there we go that is what i would be very interested to that's see that's the caveat do they live through the time skip if so great i see commander irvin minus commander irvin's very um minus he, he's, he's a leader yeah i mean he well he's a, the total leader package really where he's uh, confident and Ar arm is more of the tactician in the back who's yeah. going to do the work but not necessarily lead everyone there's the strategist and the tactician right and so eventually armin might become that uh but um we, we get as the warriors including levi go to extract whoever is inside the female titan she shields herself with those hands that we've seen before where she was able to harden everything and just ha hardens her hands and uh, smart and hardens it around her nape so no one can do that so Irvin decides, let's just shoot it, shoot off her hands. That's the way to go. <laughs> but if we shoot her hands, it'll blow up everything beneath it, which is why you're going to aim real carefully and sever them at the wrists. Now get going. But it was almost like that Darth Vader moment in Empire Strikes Back. It's like, well, they went into an asteroid field. Beat. Asteroids do not concern me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. And we had a flashback to the wonderful ignore me scene. <laughs> yeah. Because I, if I don't say it, I know there will be comments. Also, so there you go. Also, point out though that we find out that apparently. Irvin had done this to Molt Petra as well, yeah. meaning he must have done it to everybody. He's just like, <laughs> who, is the enemy? who is the enemy? Ignore Which, me! Ignore every me. single Ignore person. Her. How many people, yeah, he went around with his little hood saying, what are you really looking at here? Who do you even, think the real enemy is? Even Goodbye. better, did he have a secretary with like a list? Like, <laughs> yeah. hey, did, hey, did we did we do Petra? Uh, yeah, yeah. No, she's crossed you off. Covered All right. her. Okay, Elvis. We gotta do Elvis next. Where we thought Aaron was special. Yeah. <laughs> no. That really. That's funny because it really does like you think Aaron's special for getting that, and all of a sudden it turns out like ah, he did the Petra too. Maybe everybody. <laughs> He's <laughs> running up and down the lines. So Tiger. Uh, there's think. just there's just a loudspeaker. Yeah. Uh, attention, everyone. Everyone, this looks suspicious. <laughs> that is all. Who do you think the enemy is? <laughs> That's it. <laughs> that is all. Go about your business. Ignore me. <laughs> Over out. So Tiger uh, Version X saying on the chat that uh, they think Armin would be Irvin Jr., whereas Owen Harper, Rachel thinks that Armin would end up more like Levi than Irvin. Uh, uh... Sure, he's a strategist, he, but I still see him retaining that emotion, which we've seen more of in Levi than in Irvin. Usually, I'd say that re requires some sort of massive trauma, but 
been there, done that. Yeah. So uh, I, I gotta s- disagree with that opinion. I, I don't really see it. I see Armin completely abandoning his humanity almost to the point of unrecognizable if he so saw it fit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Tiger, by the way, saying to you, Katie, yes, our normie quota is filled. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> gotta oh, get in at God, least we one. We have a quota now. <laughs> gotta get in at least one. Please don't make it a day, a, sh- a weekly thing. <laughs> I try not to, but that scene happened. So, female Titan, though, back to her. Uh, she all of a sudden starts screaming. Ignore me. And as she's... <laughs> <laughs> After Levi baited her, like, yeah. that was... That was Holy kind of cow. like I, Levi I like, being so <laughs> dicky. I loved it. It was kind of stupid, like just yeah. like, like just like she's already like riled up trying to think, and then he just like started pressing on the fight or flight button, just like as much as he could. Exactly. It also looked like We're she started crying. You. We're gonna remove your limbs. We're gonna kill you. Yeah, you definitely see a visible emotional. Reaction yeah, like she from literally her. looked like she was about to break down and start crying, and instead she started cr- screaming and summoned a million titans. And, and, and I really love the way when we cut back to Sasha, I really love the way she put it she's like that is the sound of an animal that has been k you know that is caught in a trap and it knows it has absolutely nothing to lose yeah and that that pretty much is exactly what it was considering Uh, what happens well i mean then it ended up being a great strategical moment for her for this female titan in the end but yeah so all of a sudden apparently she has the power to roar and scream and summon titans apparently so every titan starts ignoring everybody everybody as everyone starts to realize just running past everyone specifically to go eat the titan it's basically the dinner bell it's basically uh they they'll eat each other apparently well, we saw the same thing when Aaron was a titan in yeah. Tross, and he was going on his little rampage. They ganged up on him, too. Yeah, but they didn't start eating his flesh yeah, away, they did, did they? Yeah, they, they did. Then? He lost oh. an arm at one point, I think. He lost both arms and a good section of, like, you know, rib meat right yeah, here. Yeah, they were eating him. But I, oh, I, just, I guess I didn't remember it being as much like... Well, like oh no. Well no, because he was able was to fight pretty, back. Right. Yeah. He was you know, he was he grabbed a Titan by his teeth and like managed to throw him. Whereas the, the she female. basically just hollered, Come and get it. Yeah. Exactly. Really, you know, Ugh. she must have been last in line when the powers were handed out. <laughs> I don't know, no, she the seems crystal to be doing pretty well pre- for herself. Well, well the I mean, everything thing else. was pretty good. Well, you know, she got that one, and then, like, she got back at the end of the line. Is like, all right, this um, this summons all the other titans who will consume you. Do I have to take this? Yes, it's your three power quote. Well, it's better uh. than, I mean, the colossal titan, what is his power? Just being really big. Essentially, that's it, he's just big, <laughs> big head, little uh-huh. arms. At least the armored <laughs> Titan, obviously he he's got armor. Yeah, so there you go. It's in the name. I'll give him that much. This, this is still though for her though. I mean that you have to start wondering about that ability to do that, and like start thinking about well, does that then have to also do with how all the Titans all of a sudden appeared up inside the walls at various points? If this one Titan was able to summon them all like that, oh, but and you'd think that they would have heard the scream. If that's yeah. how she brings him in, but I mean, but I mean maybe that. like there's some other way that these titans have the power to do that because apparently maybe. she was able to do that. So it's just like oh, honestly, I think it's just the noise, and a lot of titans are hanging outside the walls anyway, waiting for dinner. Well, uh, it could have. Um, they maybe, do talk about when maybe was... they do that wall clinging thing <laughs> that we see the entire time. You just never notice that, but the entire time if you actually look right outside the walls, just a zillion times like, oh, let us in. Well, they did talk about the the right flank. Like all of a sudden, just a bunch of titans came in. It's a there's a good chance that she could have just like done that scream a long way off from the walls and then just started running, and they were chasing after her the entire way. Could be. Yeah. Could be. So, uh, regardless, though, we get Mikasa uh, who had that conversation with Sasha. Obviously, thinking about Aaron first. Well, if Aaron's on the inside, how can I get to him <laughs> instead of doing what my command is? Another thing to think about is that nobody actually knows. Nobody knows this was a mission failure. All they know is that they're supposed to withdraw. They don't know why, and a lot of them are assuming, like, oh, I guess we we did it. We won. Yeah, the blue smoke went up. Time to go. Right. So no one realizes that was actually a failure. And then, as Irvin points out, they never saw a person getting eaten, only the Titan flesh when the green smoke goes up. From some someone and in the we, wings outfit. Yeah, we see somebody in a hood shooting off the green smoke, and Levi's squad responds. Oh, it must be the captain. And we and we see this person drop, you know, drop the gun and just pull out their swords and head that way. 
Yeah. And mm. then Gunther has the realization a little too late. You're not Aww. Levi? Cut. Hit tree. <laughs> uh, like, oh, that's a broken neck. He's not coming back from then that Aaron, one. Then Aaron uh. swings down there. Gunther, are you... Hey, your neck's not supposed to be like that, it's is it? It's really not that way. That's where, that that's where you put necks, right? That's that's how they hang, right? Oh, that is not how that is at all. Parallel to oh. oh. might have seen something like this coming, because he does still think that whoever's in the female Titan is still in play, and had Levi replenish his blades and his yeah. fuel before he went. Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, without or, telling Levi why. Right. And, I was like, all and right. And Levi said, you know what, you know, if it's an order, yes, I trust you implicitly. And I couldn't tell from, like, the tone of his voice if he was being sarcastic, but no, I think he was being sincere. Yeah. I think that was a little more of a, hey, audience, pay attention. Nick. Yeah, I, I mean, I, th- I took Levi as being like, okay, whatever. It seems sarcastic <laughs> to me, too, so, in his bro, read. If you say so. Yeah, like, that's how I took it, his read to be, at least. But yeah, so turns out Irvin did definitely, as he's pointing out to everyone else, after Levi goes to his blaze, he's like, yeah, this is this is not going to be good. So that is what we get as the enemy, or the enemy, as the episode ends. So she's still out there on the loose. Hey, hey and wearing a scout uniform well. now. So And she's at, you know, she's attacking Levi's squad. But so the that's one, fun. The one thing that we well, can we say. we think it's a she. Well, it's the female uh, Titan. We can, I think, we can assume. Anyway, well, anyway, we don't know. Regard- <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But I think the one thing we there might we, be a group of people. As an audience, I think what we can at least assume though is anyone who we've seen on the ground is probably not the female Titan. So yeah. at least we could be like, oh, I, that person is not the female Titan because I've seen them around while the female Titan was out on a rampage. So as an audience, we have a better idea of who may or may not be. My early theory of Krista being the female Titan (laughs) that went right out the window that same episode. No, she's no better. That's physically impossible. I was guessing Hanji for a bit because that would just, you know, that would be like her dream job. (laughs) (laughs) Except... Except she's there talking to the female I know, Titan. I know, it doesn't make <laughs> any sense. Hanji's just like poking at the, yeah, the that, body like, wow, that this would is be so great. Hanji's dream job. <laughs> oh my gosh, I get to be a Titan. This I get to study myself. Ever. How do I work? <laughs> Somebody get me a plus size scalpel, now. <laughs> like, yes, uh, uh, I'm gonna give you the most horrible visual ever. Right into the eye to start. Oh, All right, so. I regret this decision. <laughs> Science! <laughs> That wraps up this episode. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us. If you guys want to join in on the live chat, uh, come join us every single week at 4.30 p.m. Pacific time on www.afterbuzztv.com as you heard us interacting with the live chat. Uh, we have interviews, weekly interviews, so come join us. And if you guys have questions, I will read off your questions. Uh, also, come check us out on YouTube, iTunes. Please do rate, positive or negative. If it's negative, just let us know why. You know, just be like, hey, this is the why. Uh, once again, guys, I'm Dave Klein. You can find me on Twitter at the Dave Klein. That's K L E I N. You can find me on Twitter at the Menguin. That's T H E M E N G U I N. And I also do a bunch of shows here at AfterBuzz. And I'm John Quick. You can find me on Twitter at, at @nowquick. And starting next week again, Legend of Korra Woo! season four coming back really quick, really soon. <laughs> I'm Katie Cullen. You can find me on Twitter and Tumblr at Kiaxe. That's K-I-A-X-E-T. I'm also on Sword Art Online and Z Nation. S-O-A. All right. See you guys next week. Later. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. I got the letters wrong. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.